by McKinsey from McKinsey Lemoy Designs to film this video and share with everyone my tips and advice for convention prep. The convention that I'm going to this weekend is CryptidCon in Lexington, Kentucky. This uh, type of convention is more so considered like a niche convention. <clears throat> I wrote down some stuff, okay? For you guys. First tip, travel lightly. The majority of your packing list is probably going to come from your display setup. If you can find something that breaks down all the way, do that. I have um, these cork boards that I use to display my stickers on. This is very minimal in terms of packing. If you have prints or postcards, stickers, anything, you make sure that it is protected in some way from people touching them. The way that I have set this up is I have cut off the tops out of all of my cellophane bags and I have my backing card and if you can see right there that is a little push pin so I've pushed the pin through the backing card from the inside of the cellophane bag and pushed it through the back of the cork board so that way I can just take the stickers out and then put a new one in so I won't ever have to change this board unless my branding gets updated. Another tip that I have for you guys is make sure that if you are ordering your products from a third party, like for me, my prints and my postcards and my enamel pins are all made by third party, my manufacturers and suppliers. So I make sure that if I have a convention coming up, that all of the products are ordered well in advance. If they get here and I have a problem, like one of them is damaged or something's not right with them, I can contact my manufacturer, tell them they can remake it and reship it to me. If you're just getting into conventions or if you're thinking about starting conventions, I ask myself before I apply to any convention, like, will my target audience be at this convention? Figuring out whether or not you'll be successful at a mainstream convention or a niche convention, you just gotta figure out where do your products fit in, basically. Okay, this is a big one. Keep track of what is selling and how much every transaction is. That's why in my toolkit, I always make sure that I have a pen and a notepad. I make sure that I bring enough float cash. I bring a lot of ones and fives mostly. I don't really get any tens or twenties. I make sure that I have at least 50 ones. I make sure that I have um, probably like $30 in fives and then $20 in tens. So I get like $100 for my float cash. And you can do this in a cash box and then normally conventions they'll give you a lanyard and your exhibitor pass. And I always make sure that my keys are on my lanyard. I never take my lanyard off. For the smaller convention I'm going to be using a fanny pack. I think I'm still going to use the cash box whenever I'm at my table. However, whenever I'm moving from my table to my car or place that I'm staying, I'm going to put take the cash out of my cash box and move it into my fanny pack. That way it's on my person. If I'm wearing a sweatshirt, I can hide it. If you have your exhibitor pass on and the convention is over, take it off. Do not walk around outside of the convention with your exhibitor pass on because that's, that's like raising a red flag to say, hey, I have hundreds of dollars on me. Is that smart? I don't know, <laughs> but it's what I do. Um, don't mug me. So another tip that I would say, make sure that you're offering deals. People are inclined to buy more. So, yeah. Like for me in particular, my buttons are priced at $2 each per button. Offering deals like that for my postcards is essentially the same thing. You can get two or one for two dollars each or you can get three postcards for five dollars. So just figure out what kind of deals you want to offer and make sure that it's clearly labeled on your table. Also another thing, niche conventions are smaller in number. They're really good for networking opportunities because it's 
more slow slow paced kind of so you have more talking time with the other artists in artist alley also a really good thing to take note of is after you're done with the convention and you're packed up the mainstream conventions that are really big a lot of the times uh, they will send you an email ask you to rate how your experience was at the convention and ask if you want to reapply for the upcoming year if you apply right now your table fee will, will only be a hundred dollars so make sure that if you did really well at a convention and you do want to go back for the following year uh, don't be afraid to like apply early because that's another way to save yourself some cash and increase your profit margin for this convention. Another thing before you pack everything up that you do a display mock-up just make sure that you're getting the general setup like do or run through practice because whenever you're doing the setups and stuff like that you want to make sure that you know what it's gonna look like, what goes where. Whenever I do my mock-ups, I make sure that I'm taking pictures of my layout, like the order my prints are going in, my for my button display, where, which button is where. This also is really important whenever you're doing your mock-up because let's say like you didn't think about, oh, well, I didn't realize I was gonna have to attach these cork boards to my grid display and I don't have any way to do that. Take pictures of your setup. Take pictures of the order and even see how long it takes you to set up. Oh, one more thing. For transportation, what I have found works best for me to get my stuff in and out of conventions is a wagon. Now before I used to have this um, plastic dolly. I got this on Amazon for $19, but if I load it down with all of the stuff and take a turn too fast, it I just have everything falling off of it. Another way that I have tried to transport items is through the hard shell suitcases, and those, act those worked really well, however, it's really exhausting to balance the suitcases <sighs> rather than just using a wagon that has an open top. I got that wagon from Walmart. I just ordered it online and it was $50. I can fit my six foot table in there. Like that's folded in half. I can fit it in there sideways and then stack everything else that I'm gonna be bringing um, on the other side of the wagon. I decided on the wagon because the wagon will break down. I think that was pretty much all of the general tips. I'm going to show you guys all of my display stuff that I make sure that I'm packing for every convention. All right, let's go do this. The first, again, this is the box that this came in. This is my grid storage. It has all of my top connectors on there, the grid storage. I have a spare black, just regular black sheet of fabric that I got from Joann's. And then this is my fitted black tablecloth that I got off of Amazon. It's uh, good for a six foot by two foot table, but they also have ones that you can get for longer tables. These are my little clothes pins that I use to hang up all of my prints. I have S-hooks in there. I have string, packing tape, washi tape. I also have some scissors. My portable charger. <laughs> You're so cute. And I also have push pins more washi tape, more string. This one has my button sets in there. So I have that one and I also have that one. And the other two have all of my non-weatherproof stickers and my weatherproof stickers. 
I showed you guys earlier in this video are my two cork boards with all of my stickers preloaded in there. So all I have to do is hang these cork boards up on my grid. And here are two sizes of my retail bags. I got the small ones through Amazon and then I got the large ones through clear bags. This is the wagon that I got from Walmart. This is my small print and postcard and sticker sheet big display. Um, I used to have those like clear acrylic nail polish stands uh, but those I could not break down. This I can break down really easy. All of these slide out and it takes me probably about five minutes to set up um, now that I know how it goes together. <laughs> My cash box, I just ordered this one off of Amazon. This is what I keep all of my buttons in. I picked up this crinkly paper from Michaels and underneath, they're not completely full. They have um, packing paper on the bottom half and then the top half is covered in the crinkly paper just to make all of the holes look full and I don't have to make an excess amount of buttons. For setup, I just uh, put them in there and make sure I do a mock-up of how I want them displayed and laid out. Whenever I'm transporting the buttons for the convention, I got these cases from Hobby Lobby or Michaels again, and or I may have even ordered them off of Amazon. But this one is Creative Options label. I don't know if you can see it on there, but that's what I store all of my buttons in. And then for transporting this, I recycled some backing board and I just tape it over the top of that so the crinkly paper doesn't get everywhere. This box has my enamel pins. This I got from Target. And on the bottom, it has all of my small prints. This has, is again, a box that I got from my manufacturer. I recycle all the boxes that I get and just use them. This box um, has some of my small prints, postcards, and sticker sheets in it for this upcoming convention. This is my old banner that I had. I'm trying to de-wrinkle it a little bit, but I might, I'm debating on whether or not I want to remake, remake it because I've updated my color palette. I have three boxes of my business cards in there. I have my business card stand. I have two stands that I can use for sticker sheets. I have a small pink bin inside of the larger pink bin. These are my small prints and I have all of them sealed in clear bags. And then I cut out a piece of backing board a little bit larger than the actual prints themselves and I use those as a divider. And I just put them in that bin and I put a little sign on that bin that shows how much it costs. I have two of these because it never fails that I always lose one days before a convention. I think Best Buy or Staples or Office Depot, a store like that normally does have a card reader that you can go and pick up. So even if you're out of town and can't find it, normally one of those stores will have a card reader that you can pick up for $10. You wanna make sure that whenever you're setting up for a convention that you have something similar to this. It's my pricing sheet. And I think that's it. All right, guys. This is essentially everything that I walked you guys through. The packing list and the displays. This is how everything is packed. I hope you guys um, found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, you know, just leave them in the comments. And please, please, please like and subscribe to the channel. So, yeah. All right. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye.